At the end of the War of Independence, George Washington retired his military command and sought to retire from public life. His actions were seen as a testimony to his character since he neither demanded nor expected to have his military achievements lauded or celebrated. In the face of the political challenges of 1784 to 1787, however, and the ineptitude and problems faced by the Congress under the Articles of Confederation, a number of friends and people close to Washington enticed him out of private life and back into the limelight again in order to contribute to bolstering the new nation's political situation. As a result, Washington attended the convention about the way forward with the new constitution at Philadelphia in 1787 and was elected chairman, overseeing discussion and debate rather than participating in it. Once a draft constitution was developed, Washington was a supporter of the document and identified with the Federalists in the debate over the constitution. Washington's support for the draft constitution was seen by many historians as significant, given that the esteem with which Washington was held meant that his support was a major endorsement for the constitution. It seems that the executive office of the president was virtually created with Washington in mind. With the ratification of the Constitution, Washington was invited to become the first president of the United States of America and he was inaugurated on the 30th of April 1789. In the role of president, Washington helped create a number of the conventions around the office. For instance, he preferred that people bow or curtsy to him, but that he be called Mr. President rather than Your Highness, making him more approachable. This was a challenge with potentially enormous consequences for Washington because everyone assumed, including Washington himself, that if he failed at this task, he would potentially bring the entire experiment in government crashing to ruin. There was no modern model for a republic and ancient republics had been extremely fragile, prone to collapse into monarchy or tyranny, and America had only just divorced itself from its own monarchical past. Many people assumed that the fragile nation would probably, in fact eventually, fall back into what it had been before, monarchy. So for good reason, Washington worried about things like his carriage, his clothing and his dinner table, and he knew that other people watched such things as well. As a result, Washington aimed for simplicity of dress and everything which can tend to support propriety of character without partaking of the follies of luxury and ostentation, he said. This was reflected right down to his decision about what to wear for his inauguration. He chose what he clearly assumed to be an ensemble of Republican balance. He wore a suit made of plain American-made cloth, but he had gilt buttons and diamond buckles on his shoes. So the man who supported the draft constitution, worried about the sort of presidency that he was creating, was also, according to Alpha History, a moody and short-tempered person in private. He was careful to avoid displays of anger, emotion or exasperation, both in public and in correspondence, because he knew the eyes of America were upon him. All in all, Washington made some significant contributions and changes to the new society.